Hey everybody. Uh, so today we're gonna make a quick video on how to show you how to make car keys or originate a car key without having to spend uh, hundreds if not thousands on those electronic uh, key code cutting machines like uh, the Dolphin, the um, HPC Blitz, um, you know, they're, they're, up, they're upwards in the thousands pretty much. But what if you're starting locksmithing, right? What if you're, you're new? and you want to start making car keys or even code cutting residential keys or whatever it is um, this method will help you out as a matter of fact that's how i began when i started locksmithing over six years ago i didn't have the money to right off the bat purchase one of these expensive machines um, i started with death keys uh, and death keys are just t technically they're just keys with the specific uh, spacing and the depth okay I'll get uh, I will get more into the detail as soon as we start doing what I'm gonna do but yeah like I said um, this is the method that I used for upwards of two three years until I decided uh, until I started making enough money to purchase one of these fancy automatic key cut key cutting machines um, but this is a great effective way uh, I did I've, I've done hundreds of vehicles with this method never failed me once um, you just have to do it right and if you pay attention to this to today's video and you can apply this to any other type of cars uh, today we're actually going to be working on a Ford uh, this is on an H75 key this is a Ford door lock for I believe it's for a cargo van an E350 E150 application uh, but same method would work for like an ignition for a door this is for Ford for Nissan Mitsubishi pretty much any car key you know that has double-sided cuts and uh, there's also ways to use step keys to do high security, but that's we can do a video on that some other day. Uh, if you guys do request it, let me know in the comment section or message me and now we'll be more than happy to do that for you. Um, but this is what I call the poor man's way of coat cutting because we we're, we're only gonna use a pretty inexpensive key cutting machine. I literally got this machine, uh, let me show you guys. I got this one, this right hand off of Craigslist like five years ago for like, no, five, six years ago, I believe, for roughly, I think it was like 150. Um, it was, it's used, um, and ever since, I've been using this thing and till now, and it works. But what I'm trying to say, you can get any key, key duplicating machine, okay? Any, any would work. Um, and get the depth keys, and just do exactly as I say, and learn what I'm doing, learn everything I'm doing, and you'll be able to knock it out pretty, pretty good. Okay? All right, so we're going to get started. All right, guys, so... I went ahead and removed the face cap and took the cylinder out of the lock casing. And now the most important part here. Um, when you remove each of these wafers, line them up from one to six, or depending on the application you're working on, either, either two through 10, or depending on the type of lock you're working on. But in this case, it's a four. It's gonna go from one through six. Okay, so let's start taking this guy out. I said make sure that they're all aligned with them. that they're all together okay Just, you don't want to mix them up because if you mix them up uh, you're gonna be able you're gonna have like a completely different code and it's gonna make your life a living hell and you don't want to do that so just make sure to have a nice clean space when you're working and making these keys Make sure to be organized. Okay, put the last one. Yeah. Okay, so this is what we have. All right, so now that the wafers are outside of the lock, we removed it from the cylinder. If you look all the way down to the bottom, I don't know if you can pick it up, but you can see some numbers stamped. So this one says one, three, three, five four and two sometimes these wafers might have them here on the corners or maybe if you flip it to the other side it should be on the other side on the bottom it's either here or here i think it's uh chrysler dodge and jeep have them here um, but ford mostly have them on the bottom side okay anyways so i already wrote it down here so we got one three three five four two okay 
And now I'm gonna show you how to use these guys to generate a key so that we can operate this lock. So I have the key loaded onto the jaw now. So this is what's the tricky part, okay? So what you have to see is the first one we're gonna disregard, which is this one right here. The first cut right here, that's cut one. Ignore that one because it's a one. We're cutting a cut three on number, right here, no, oh sorry, number two right here. Okay, so what we're gonna do, it's gonna be a little bit tough for me because I have uh, both my hands busy. So I'm gonna lift up the jaw here. Let me see if I can zoom in. And this is cut one. We're gonna pass this one, we're gonna jump to cut two. Okay, so we're gonna turn the machine on. Zoom out. Turn the machine on. It's a bit hard working with uh, only two hands and no one to help me. So bear with me here. So now, as you can see, there's a cut there. And that is a cut number three for this position. Now, let's, uh, all right, so the machine is loaded now. And we're gonna go to cut number three. So, sorry. So that's number, so as you can see here, see if I can grab it, one, Two, and the next one's three. So we're gonna hop over to three and cut that there. So just come here. There you go. So number two and three is nice and cut. And we bring the machine back. And the next one is going to be a number five. So we're gonna go ahead and turn off our machine. Jump over here to our dev key, remove number three, and as you can see, we're no, there's no more three, so we're done with three. We'll put this up your back. The next one we're doing is a number five cut, which is over here. Bring it over here. Right, let me put you guys down real quick and uh, load it up. Number five on we're gonna cut a depth five on space four. So we'll come here and you can see number one, two, three, four. We're on number four. Bring the machine back. Start this guy up. So we already took care of one, three, three, five. Now we need to cut four for space six, which is this guy. All right, let me set you guys down real quick and uh, change that up. Four. Okay. So as you can see, space five, depth four. Bring the machine in here. As you can see, it's one, two, three, four, five's right there. Bring the machine down. Start her up. Bring her in. I'll give me a second. I need to pull this guy real quick. For our last cuts, for cut, it's gonna be space six, it's gonna be a number two. Okay, so number two obviously is gonna be the this one right here. All right, let me mount her up. Space 
basics. And let's see what we got. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and that's six right here. Drop it down. Start it up. Bring it in. So what you're gonna do now, you're gonna do the same thing on the opposite side. So as you can see, we have the, uh, oh, let me do it real quick. So I don't know if you can see there, but you got a Kelcat key right there. So now you're gonna flip the key and you're gonna do the same thing you did here. You're gonna do it on the opposite side. And I'm gonna do that off camera so I can do a little bit quicker. All right, so as you can see, this is the finished product. I still have to debur it here in the machine. Let's do that real quick. I'm gonna check on camera if it works or not, okay? So here you go. This is the key you have. I wish they had a little bit of shavings there, but it'll come off. As you can see, oh, yeah, I remember. this is what you have. One through three, five, four, two. One through three, one, five, uh, one through three, five, four, two. So now we're gonna put the wafers back in in order. So first one is gonna go in the first chamber, and um, the same way they came out, the same way they have to pop back in. So I'm gonna pause you get pause it here, and then I'm gonna come back when it's in. Okay. All right, guys. So here you go. Moment of truth. I put the I put the teeth back in. Oh, be careful, cause they can fall out. So we got our key here, and let's pop it in. Look at that. Nice and flush. That is what we want. We insert it back into the cylinder. Look at that. It rotates freely. It doesn't stick. It's it's properly cut, you know. And we did this with just a key duplicator and some basic, you know, some depth keys, and we were able to create this this key for this lock. Well, now you might be saying, well, I'm gonna turn the ignition. Well, see, this is where you're gonna need those uh, programs like Instacode. And what you do, once you're in Instacode, you type in these, these these numbers that you have down here, the, the, the each little number that's stamped on the on the teeth, and you insert it in this program, and they will give you the last two, because uh, normally Ford has um, has two more wafers in the end, and the, the, these will turn the ignition. Without these, you will not be able to turn. You'll turn the door locks. You'll turn the trunk but you will not turn the ignition and you'll punch these into the software and it'll convert these ones right here. And all you have to do is just get the depth keys and finish up putting these guys on the new key and you're done. You'll turn the ignition right over. But as you can see, we didn't need anything expensive. We just got some depth keys and then a standard duplicator and we were able to uh, make a nice cut key here. As you can see, look, it's not even popping up. It's just nice and flush, okay? All right, so let's uh, put this back in. Look at that, beautiful. And also, let me, I think it's worth mentioning. Uh, let's say some cars, uh, uh, the positioning are not like in number one. Like in this situation, sometimes they start on number two. For example, uh, Dodge, Jeep, and Dodge, Jeep, and uh, what is the other one? Chrysler. Uh, they start on number two, okay? But um, in order to check, you can always use Instacode so it can let you know the positioning of the lock, or you, you have one of these leashy tools, which I highly recommend, and all you have to do is just go to, uh, insert it into the lock, and just make sure you go to number one. And if you're able to move uh, away for number one, as you can see, you put it here. Sorry about that. You can see I put on number four. See the, how the first one's rotating up, going down on me, and I'm here on number one. See, so I know that number space one there is a wafer. I don't know that might sound a little bit confusing, but the more you study, the more you uh, look into locksmithing, you'll you'll get some you'll get more knowledge and you'll get better at this. But uh, this is one of the most efficient ways uh, to make car keys if you don't want to spend all those thousands on those key cutting machines. Um, another reason why I recommend this is, uh, I had a key cutting machine, which I'll show you guys right over here. Excuse the mess, but you see this one right here? This machine here cost me around 
two to almost three thousand dollars a couple years back and one day it just caught on fire from the inside <laughs> so what happened the machine caught on fire and it took me some time to get a new replacement right but i still had customers i had to service i had to make the car keys um, and that automatic key machine, you know, you just put the key on there and it cuts it automatically within seconds. But, but it, it failed me. So I had to come back to how I, the basics pretty much. And this method got me through this situation. Um, what I'm trying to say is it's, it's, it's good to have, you know, these, all these expensive machines, but what if that expensive machine has a, a calibration problem? What if that machine gets, it breaks or something? It's always good to have a second method on making keys not just being stuck on oh just hope all you do is use the expensive machines all these electronic machines but, but what, if, what if that machine fails it's always good to know the bare bones the basic way like that you have something else up your sleeve in case something happens you always have an alternative so that'll conclude today's video um that's just the basics on how to use depth keys if you apply this with different type of depth keys and different type of locks apply the same method you'll be able to cut code keys efficiently without needing or relying on expensive machines which you know these machines eventually you'll upgrade and and have them and they'll be quite useful you know on your journey as a locksmith but if something happens and they fail you can always revert back to the basics and you can always make money no matter what which i believe as a locksmith we're supposed to have multiple ways to make money you know not just rely on one machine um so there you have it guys please like and subscribe